There are many worthy causes deserving of support and many charitable organizations looking for donations. One way potential donors can learn more about an organization and its accountability is by checking to see if the charity is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Here to tell us more about the BBB Wise Giving Alliance's Standards for Charity Accountability is Karen Solcheski with the Better Business Bureau of Northwest Florida. Thank you for being here today, Karen. Thank you for having me. Well, I've actually never heard about this till recently. Can you explain to our viewers and even myself what the BBB Wise Giving Alliance consists of? Sure. When most people think about the Better Business Bureau, they tend to think about business. That's what I think. Uh, exactly. And so a lot of times that's where people really kind of contact us. But um, through the B BBB Wise Giving Alliance, we also run a charity review program. Okay. Um, so just like businesses have standards that they have to meet in yeah. order to be accredited, so do charities. We have uh, the 20 standards for charity accountability, and we evaluate charities against those standards to see what they meet, what they don't, um, and maybe help them if they don't meet standards to become right. uh, able to meet those standards. And then we issue reports on that through our Wise Giving Alliance. Well, before we dive into the standards and those reports, when did this program start? How long has it been going on? And what was it designed to do, you know, aside from accrediting those charities? Sure. Uh, the Wise Giving Alliance actually formed in 2001 when we had two different organizations that merged. Okay. Um, and those organizations had been around for almost a century and they joined together because they realized that we were kind of evaluating against a lot of the same standards. Uh, so they came together, we formed the Wise Giving Alliance. Okay. Uh, we took a look at the standards to see, you know, best practices, um, you know, which ones did we want to focus on, which ones could we eliminate, could we get rid of some of that duplication, and then we came up with the 20 standards for charity accountability that we started using in 2001. So can you name some of those 20 standards, not all of them of course, <laughs> but some of them that you feel are the most important, you know, sure. that, that would help people, you know, guide them to the right charities to donate to? The 20 standards fall into four different categories. Okay. So the first is governance and oversight. We look at the board of directors to make sure that they're involved, right. um, that they know what's going on financially, that they're evaluating the CEO. Um, we look at whether or not they approve the budget, do they get copies of the 990, the financial statements every year, um, do they meet on a regular basis, are they avoiding conflicts of interest. You know, the things that we tend to see a lot of problems with in charities, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that you have independent, non-biased members who are right. involved in the governance. Um, the next part looks at measuring effectiveness. Is the organization doing what it was created to do? Right. Um, we're not going to come in and say whether or not you're meeting your mission, mm -hmm. but we'll, we want the board to do that. And so we ask, do they have some kind of policy in place where they're looking at the the way the organization is running at least once every other year. That's good. And so it may be a strategic plan, it mm -hmm. may be a visioning session, whatever you want to call it, but are they looking at what the organization has accomplished and what they need to do moving forward and coming up with a written report for the board to look at at least every other year? Yeah, that's definitely important to, to stay on top of everything that the charity is doing. Absolutely. Um, now, when you say charity, nonprofit, same thing, every everything in one lump sum? We are looking at difference? charitable nonprofits. Charitable so nonprofits. according to the IRS, it's a 501c3 okay. designation. Um, there's lots of different tax-exempt organizations, mm -hmm. but when you make a donation, typically you're going to be giving to a 501c3, and that, that allows you to write that donation off on your taxes. Okay. Um, we have had some organizations that have been operating as nonprofits that mm. are not actually 501c3s, right. um, and that's where the IRS is going to get involved. <laughs> We're not getting get involved in the legal aspect of that, right. um, but that is one of the things that we look at to okay. make sure that they truly are um, a legitimate charity and that your donations are going to be tax exempt. So in our area, can you tell us some of the ones that have this accreditation? Sure. And how many there are? Um, our BBB serves 14 counties, so we cover oh, wow. uh, pretty much all of Northwest Florida. Okay. And within that, we have nine accredited charities. Okay. Council on Aging is one of yep. them. Yep. Uh, we have the Ronald McDonald House Charities. We have Catholic Charities. United Way of Escambia County, mm -hmm. Gulf Coast Kids House, Santa Rosa Kids House, Junior Achievement, uh, Waterfront Rescue Mission, and then the Gadsden Historical Society, a Excellent. little bit further east. Well, I know of all of those, and that is a wonderful thing that they have going for them. Um, do you all have any other charities that are in the works of getting accredited, or how do you go about even signing up to get accredited? Do you all seek them out, or do they come to you? How does that work? Actually, our process is inquiry-driven. So oh, when okay. donors come to us, or potential, huh. potential donors come to us and ask us about an organization, we then go to that charity and ask them for information. Um, you know, we, we serve 14 
surrounding counties. There's no way we could go out to every single right. charity within our service area right. and ask them for information. So we're really looking to meet the needs of the community. Those okay. who come to us and ask us about a specific charity, then we're going to go to them. Um, and so then we'll ask them for information to try and verify whether or not they meet those 20 standards. And then at that point they get accredited, like right then and there when you go and seek out the information? If they meet all 20 of those standards, they're accredited. Okay. We have a lot of charities in our database that have gone through the process. Uh -huh. They may not meet all the standards right now. Okay. Um, if they don't meet all the standards, we're certainly willing to work with them to uh -huh. try and get them to the point where they will. So sometimes they may come to us and only meet 10 of them, right. but they're willing to work and make changes, talk to their board, yeah. and implement new policies. And so by the time we finally issue a report, maybe they make 15. So, you know, we definitely want to work with the charities. This right. is not to penalize a nonprofit yeah. or to point fingers to and say help. you're bad. You know, it, it's an information service to donors to help them make informed giving decisions, right. but it also kind of gives best practices for the charities. Yeah. Um, when we came up with the standards, we talked to um, donors, we did survey research, asked them what kind of information they wanted to know. Right. But then we also went back to the nonprofits and said, okay, they say they want you to spend 95% of their donation on programs and services, yeah. but you got to pay the light bill. So what's realistic? Right. And so from there, we talked to the executives, we talked to IRS, we talked to accountants, and we came up with you know what we feel are very reasonable standards for a charity yeah, to meet. Yeah, it sounds um, like it. And if they're very small or very large, you know, we can work with them to try and come up with ways that they can meet those standards in the future. Well, so with that being said, then, when donors want to donate their money and everything like that, what reports can they get from y'all about these charities that they want to know information about? I, there's evaluative reports that you'll have, right? Absolutely. Okay. Once we go through that entire process and the charity says either we've met everything mm -hmm. and, and they're accredited right. or they can't, they've gone as far as they can. They just can't meet all 20 standards right now. Um, then we issue our report and we'll tell donors, you know, standard by standard, mm -hmm. which ones they meet, which ones they don't. Yeah. And some of them, it's like a multi-pronged standard, so maybe they meet part of it, but not all of it. We'll be very specific in the report to say that, you know, maybe they don't meet standard 16, which has to do right. with having an annual report. And maybe the only thing that's missing is that they don't have all of the financial information listed in the proper At format that time. in there. So we'll say they have an annual report, it's just this one piece of information that's missing. And then the donor can decide whether or not that's important enough right. to them to determine whether or not they want to make that donation to that charity. And so then if they want to make that donation to the charity, now those that they that y'all don't have any information on or that aren't accredited necessarily, what if they call and they say, I want to give to that charity? I mean, does it, does it, I know you already said earlier, it doesn't penalize the charities or anything like that, but but does it imply that they're automatically unworthy of support or anything like that? Or would you recommend that they go and talk to the charity? How, how would you go about that if they're not accredited? Right. Um, we don't determine whether or not a charity is a worthy right. cause. That's something only you as a donor can decide. Mm -hmm. um, we have about 170, 180 charities in our database. These are charities that donors have asked us about. We know right. we have a lot more than that in our service yeah, area, obviously. Um, about 40 of them have gone through the process, and of course nine of those are accredited mm -hmm. right now. Um, the rest either have reports in progress, we're working with them, mm -hmm. or they've gone as far as they can, they just don't meet all the standards right now. But maybe when we do the review and again, they'll be able to meet right. some more. Um, you know, we definitely encourage donors, if we have a charity that um, is in our database, mm -hmm. but they haven't gone through the process, you know, if a donor wants that information, tell the charity. Right. Because it's one thing for us to come to them and ask them for information, but if they see that their donors are looking for this information, they more inclined you know, they may, they may see the value in it and, and want to come work with us to go through this process yeah. as well. Well, that sounds really amazing. And is there a website that they can see, like the list of the nine, right, nine mm -hmm. accredited charities in our area? Or can they call somebody at your office to get more information? How should our viewers go about finding more about it? Um, you can definitely go to our website. You okay. can start with bbb.org. Okay. Put in your local zip code, and that'll bring you to our site. Okay. Um, and then we have a section for charities and donors. You can see all of our okay. accredited charities there. All right. Um, if you don't have internet access, you can always call our office, 429 -00 Zero two. Okay. Um, and you can get information about specific charities or a list of all of our accredited. Well, great. I hope a lot of people call and start donating back to our charities because they do great things for our community and Absolutely. we appreciate what y'all are doing for everybody that's interested in donating because I know that you want to be careful where you put your money so that really helps everybody. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank we appreciate it.